Welcome to another Safish Airs podcast and this time around we want to take a look at the past with the device that started it all, the Yola phone basically. Uh, this device was the first device that started the Safish OS campaign or the Safish OS roll-up and uh, this is a pretty unique device as it is now five years old and it's still has the ability to run the latest Selfish OS operating system. So version 3.0 is running on here, as you can see. Let me show, pull up the device infos about the operating system. And as you can see here, it is running the latest version 3.008 or 008, 3008 without any issues and as you can see here multitasking is working fine for this pretty old device with a Snapdragon 400, 1 gigabytes of RAM and I think 16 gigabytes of internal storage only. You can see I have no problems running all the applications. Of course starting the applications might take a little bit longer as this device is a little bit older. Five years old device running the latest software is still I think a pretty unique um, and very interesting thing that this uh, phone still allows you to run the latest applications. Of course, there are some limits to the hardware. Of course, starting the applications, as you can see here, um, I have now, I think, nine applications running. Uh, it is maybe a little bit slow here and there in switching between the applications, or it might even, because of only one gigabyte of RAM, kill some applications in the background. And of course, the form factor is a form factor from a phone five years ago. Um, big bezels and this uh, very tiny screen in comparison to nowadays smartphones. But still, when it came out, I think it was a very unique and nice uh, designed phone. Let me turn off the device itself. As you can see here, it has nice curves to it. This rounded corner here on the bottom, this rounded corner on the edge, this sharp corner on, on the back plate. A pretty unique design uh, by Yola, as you can see here. The logo is still working fine. You have a micro USB port, of course, microphone and headphone jack. You don't find it nowadays on, uh, on those smartphones. Um, LED and an 8 megapixel shooter. And I have the white version here, but one of the unique selling points, of, of course, here. You have a power button and a volume rocker, of course. Uh, one of the unique selling points of this device is, of course, a was back in the time, a pretty revolutionary uh, thing to do that others followed years later. Uh, the option to just simply uh, remove the back plate here. And the back plate had some contacts in here, uh, some NFC-like contacts. And there was a poppy, I think, what, what was it called? Poppy red or orange backplate. And if you change the backplate, these contacts were contacting with these here. And this was, no, with these here, <laughs> of course, with these here. And this was then communicating with the OS itself. And um, basically you could change the uh, ambience this way and add some unique features to the device itself. Uh, and of course, as it was a nice or is an I squared C um, interface, you can of course add some third party stuff just like here. I have a funky, uh, funky O, uh, the other half keyboard, and it has the same contacts here for controlling the keyboard. So it's using these contacts here to, whoops, it's a little hacky. Uh. Let me put that back together. It will add, of course, a little bit in terms of thickness to the device, but you now have a device with a QWERTY keyboard and you can use this QWERTY keyboard to type on the device. Let me try if this still works. I'm not sure if this works or not. Because the magnets might be a little bit loose. Is it using magnets to hold the uh, contact pins to the other half. So one thing, one good thing is if you don't want to have such such a bulk, you can just remove the keyboard and have an otherwise uh, cover with uh, contacts in here. Uh, but this was also a pretty nice um, design. Sadly, no one really cared about it. And so the, um, 
the other half design was never took off. Uh, you know, others tried it as well. Moto has, I think, the X devices. Um, uh, Motorola uh, has, uh, has the X generation with, with also uh, those kind of contacts, and you can put other um, uh, interesting stuff in here, like, uh, for example, another camera or um, loudspeakers or something like this, and uh, to yeah, make performant hardware upgrades to the device. And the other were the first ones that improved upon the uh, first prototypes uh, by providing an I2C uh, interface to their phones. So the first ones that really did it in a mass uh, product way. They also had uh, different back covers here with, with different functions. There were back covers with, with LCD displays or OLED displays on the back displaying the time or even uh, photovoltaic um, plates so you, uh, you can charge uh, your phone with uh, sunlight. It was also, also nice or, or just simply back battery packs and so on. So pretty nice and unique uh, design feature. Of course this this uh, the other half case with the keyboard is a bit, a bit a little bit hacky as you can see here. It's falling off sometimes so it's not a very um, uh, very and, and as you can see not not very useful nowadays as it's not working anymore. Uh, but it was back in the time a very interesting thing and uh, as you can see here I think this was handmade which is also pretty nice and yeah I like this and used it a lot back in the days to type stuff and uh, yeah I would like to have something new nowadays in our smartphones um, but sadly that never took off. But what remains of the Yola One, how is it all also called, is that this device is still usable today in 2018. After five years, you can still use it as a, your main smartphone even. I'm not using it as my main smartphone uh, because I have now the Xperia X device running with Safish S, uh, also the latest version of Safish S 3.0. Um, but um, it's still usable today if you... Um, don't need a very fast operating system because it's a little bit slow here and there in loading times and, and, and web browsing might be a little bit of a pain and the Android um, uh, runtime emulation in here is stuck with version 4.1 so you don't get the latest and greatest of Android apps running but you can also run Android apps if you'd like to and yeah this is uh, pretty much my view on this great little device that started it all and I think I want to end it with the uh, I think this is the only ringtone I like to listen to even in my spare time uh, created with a new nice video also as well that started the whole it's on, on the loudest stage already so this is also one of the problems it was a very quiet loudspeaker in here but this video and this ringtone basically started it all, the Yola One device. And uh, I'm pretty surprised it's still supported by Yola today with the brand new Savage S 3.0. So I hope you enjoyed this little memory lane walk down to the past, not so distant past, but when you Compare it with other smartphones, five years are basically, yeah, big revolutions that, that uh, the Yola phone survived in terms of the mobile industry. So it's pretty nice that it's still available and still getting updates apparently as you can see here. So let me install those updates as well. So pretty nice device, the Yola one, of course has to error out <laughs> and yeah this was my little view on the Yolo one smartphone running the newest SafeJS uh, 3.0 so after five years still supported still alive still kicking uh, the Yolo one